All right, I just kind of wanted to record um, how our plants are doing. Um, got peppers growing up here. Got some jalapenos, some banana peppers. Uh, some other kind of like Spanish long pepper, I forget the name of it. He was like Cuerno de Toro or something like that. And then California Wonder bell peppers. And then these empty pots were just planted with some tomatoes. So we've got mortgage lifter tomatoes in these little uh, bear cups up here. A red, red bell, which is from seeds I saved from the store-bought plant last year. Wasn't sure I was going to because we've got all these California wonders, but I thought, oh, we'll try it. We'll just, just experiment see what happens. And down here, you've got some broccoli and kale. Um, I think this is about two weeks worth of growth, I want to say. And then the celery is about three weeks. Onions, Probably about two weeks, I think, as well. I think they were planted at the same time as the kale and broccoli. Eight cups with cherry tomatoes. Eight cups with San Marzano paste tomatoes. We have six cups of uh, beef steak for mortgage lifters. So we grew the beef steak and the mortgage lifters. The beef steak were from seeds that I got also from a plant that I bought at the store. And I couple plants that I bought. They were heirloom beef steaks that we got from Meyer. They actually worked out pretty good. They, uh, they, they weren't huge. It sounds like they'd be huge, but they're pretty small. Uh, maybe baseball sized at the most. But the mortgage lifters have like softball sized tomatoes and they just took forever. So that's why we're going to go with some of these. So just wanted to show you the setup. Got these two lights up here, full spectrum grow lights. And then we got, well, there's four. It came in a four pack. Yeah. And uh, that's what we're using for our grow lights in the spare room. Of course, we got a fan up there. That's all we got for now. These are the peppers that we've been growing indoors all winter more or less so that we can get a head start in the spring but as you can see we've been getting uh, some peppers off it uh, some just end up being little teeny tiny guys and then they turn red and and come off uh, I cut them off when they start changing colors of course um, but some grow up to be decent sized I mean this isn't like a full-grown pepper size but it's not bad uh, so we have like five containers here, but technically this one has two and this one has two. And I've, I've trimmed this guy, pruned that guy. I was going to prune some of these other guys, but they're already kind of small, so I didn't prune them. They're going to go out outside into the ground as soon as uh, it's warm enough out there. I forgot. I'm not very good at remembering to record things, but I want to so I can document all this stuff. But I just got four sweet potatoes from the store. Um, I saw a video uh, starting slips this way. I'm hoping that it works. That's uh, just a uh, cocoa core that it's in. Because um, I don't want any mold or fungus gnats or any of that kind of stuff to bother them. It's, uh, of course, pretty moistened. And the video I saw just had them buried halfway. So. Hopefully that works. I did uh, purchase these so that I can get my Tupperwares back and uh, hopefully that reflectiveness will help because you can see some of these are kind of not in the, the light. So I may end up having to move some of these over a little, move them around so that everybody gets plenty of light. I'll probably have to rotate them out anyways. You can see the peppers up here doing really good. Uh, some of them are starting to get their little uh, true leaves now, so that makes me happy. And of course, all of our new things are tomatoes and our mortgage lifter tomatoes and our little red bell peppers. 
just got planted um, a few days back, so they're not doing anything yet. But anyway, so that's how everything out here is going so far. Okay, this is how everything's doing on April 1st. Everything's coming along nicely. I'm going to have to trim those onions soon. Most of the tomato seeds have sprouted. Of course, I don't have any activity yet from the cherry ones. I'm a little nervous about that just because um, those were seeds that I saved myself from a ton of those uh, sweetie cherry tomatoes. And I don't know if they were all viable. I mean, I tried to put like four to five in each cup. Uh, just in case. Hopefully they do do well. We'll just see. And then the two barren ones up here are the red bells that I'd planted much later. But And of course the sweet potatoes not doing anything yet. Don't expect them to for probably another week or so at least. But we'll see. I've never done it before so I don't know. Also I'm not sure if I showed any of these. Um, they were just these two. Uh, this is just um, I think it's triple curled parsley and then this is lavender neither one of those were ready to go into the ground uh, last year because they were so tiny so I just ended up bringing them in here and of course the lavender didn't even germinate for about I don't know I'd say two months I don't know it was a couple months anyways so it was like the teeny tiniest seedling um, for much of the fall and it would never have survived so it's doing pretty good in here it'll be going out of course in the springtime uh, this was just an experiment to see whether or not I could propagate peppers with rooting powder and water um, seems like the answer is no I mean there's little little parts that look like they're trying to um, do something but I don't think that's actually the case. This is just from this dill plant, which I pulled off just because it was just barely starting to flower. And I'm going to try to save the seeds. We'll see. This is just a, an experiment with regrowing um, store-bought celery. We'll just, just for funsies. Um, and these are just Cretan onions. Also store-bought. This is actually their second year. I've used them quite a lot, mostly in our uh, vegetable soups. And then, yeah, this is the dill that I thought, well, it, it was just left in a cup and it was outside and it's an annual, so it was gonna die back anyway. So I've actually um, kept pulling off from it and making pickles and stuff with it. So it worked out all right, because we go through a lot of pickles here. And of course the peppers and they're definitely they've lost a lot of uh, leaves where they don't touch the sun um, you can see the branches that are at are facing toward the sun and actually get sun or get light from there um, have leaves on them and uh, the plant that's missing the most leaves has the biggest pepper right now clinky dink I don't know um, we've had a ton of stink bugs on these guys though. You know, it's like you go weeks and you don't see one and then all of a sudden there'll be like three or four and you're like, where the heck are you coming from? I mean, I've checked the leaves. I have no idea. Um, we also, of course, have dealt with fungus gnats because these were outside before. Um, we brought them in for the winter to overwinter in here. And so we've had to use these uh, fly strips that my mom gave us and also just to cup of water. They seem to really like that too. I think they'll make it fine till spring because they've been going all these months. And then they'll be going out in the garden. So pretty excited about that. Pretty excited to get a jump start. I might prune them back some. Um, not too much, but you know, some. Oh. <laughs> this leaf just made me jump. A little leaf curled around with a little <laughs> twig hanging down. Wait, let me see. Right there. It I, it just caught my eye for the first time. And it just scared the living crap out of me because I still, I'm 
bug phobic. <laughs> All bugs, pretty much. I can't stand uh, butterflies or ladybugs, but I know they're good for the garden, so I'm working on it. <laughs> okay, I just thought I would. Oh, look at that. Robin's like chasing that junk all around. What are you doing? Never seen that before. Anyways, I was gonna just show what the garden looks like right now. It's like 42 degrees outside right now, and today's April 2nd. And of course, we're gonna go take the garden out to about that um, either second or third post out. But I think that's what we're doing. Is that Robin? I think that Robin might be trying to get. Yeah, it's getting to the mealworms that are. Must, they must have fallen out right there because of the wind knocked the bird feeder over. Yesterday it was super windy. They never get to eat out of the feeder, obviously, because they're not really feeder birds. But with the with the thing being on the ground, it's like perfect for it to be able to eat the mealworms. Anyways, but hopefully this week will be enough to be able to get out into the garden and start doing some work. Uh, clearing that land. We are also checking on the plants. Today is April 4th. You can see the peppers are doing lovely. Um, you know, except for we got these guys. They take a while. I mean, these ones, uh, the California Wonder Peppers took forever to germinate. So we probably got another four days or so before those guys germinate. Probably. I can't remember exactly when I planted them. Um, anyways, our brassicas are doing lovely. Celery, just barely creaking up there. Um, onions doing well. Had to cut those because uh, they were touching the, the light. Um, these tomatoes doing very well, which are the San Marzanos and beef steaks. And no activity from these guys yet after reseeding them. Nothing from that, which is uh, rosemary that's been stratified. Nothing yet from the sweet potatoes. That's how everybody's doing so far. I'm a little worried um, that you know, maybe they won't get enough light because some of them are directly under it, others are off to the side. Hopefully we'll start to be able to um, put them outside soon enough. An hour a day or whatever of direct sunlight. Um, and then start using the sun more. Like I said, I can't wait to get these guys outside. And they'll start perking up and, and doing a lot better. It's Fruiting is rough on them in a container like this. I did fertilize them today. It's hard to keep up when you're in, you know, kind of small containers in a dry environment in the middle of winter, you know. But there's the singular little rosemary that came from the baggie. He was barely two little leaves folded together um, with a, just a little white stem. You couldn't even see roots or anything. And uh, I basically could just set him on the soil and just push him in ever so slightly because I didn't want to bury him and I was convinced he wasn't going to root or do anything but he looks like he's actually taken root so I'm really happy for that but okay that's it for today so beautiful day out so far today um I don't remember what date it is the April 10th or something but it's like 50 degrees very sunny so bring in the plants and then the tomato and pepper seedlings out for a little sunshine. Um, I don't know. I probably should bring the others as well. So just a second. Okay, so we brought the onions, the celery, and uh, the kale and broccoli out. So everything's going to get some sun today. And... Oh shoot, I'm missing one more thing. Okay, the one more thing was the little uh, rosemary plant. Anyways, peppers are definitely looking a little rough, but this hopefully will pep them up. They're only going to be out here about an hour. Um, you know, so I don't want to scare them to death. <laughs> you 
No, I don't want to sunburn them. Anyways, so we're working on the new part of the garden. We've been out here for a couple hours. Jake's been doing the majority of the work with the little electric tiller. But I've been digging, softening the ground up. So, let's see. We're just gonna expand it out to about here so that we have plenty of room. And of course, we'll have to go all the way back over there um, to the end to meet up with the other one. But um, this garden, the original bed, was worked on by Gabby today. <laughs> and so she was like scraping all the weeds and stuff. We gotta figure out what to do with the end of this still. Cause I think I was gonna use it for like compost area and I might still, I don't know. Or we might just take this, remove this, get this out of here cause it does bring in the, some pests and stuff and uh, clean it up. And then just compost outside of the yard which is supposed to originally what I wanted to do like back over in the corner over there. But we'll see. So, everything is waking up. Um, you can see the grass is getting nice and green. Oh, there's a hole right there. And of course, Jake has to keep getting the crud off the bottom of the tiller. Because, yeah, that's a big one. That's a big one. Oh, yeah. I don't even know what that would have been from. No idea. It's so weird. Oh, there's another big hole. Yeah, so we've got all kinds of critters in the yard. Um, anyways, there's our little maple tree that's humongously tall now. Do you see the size of this guy? Do you remember when this was planted yeah. two years ago? It was like here. Yeah. I would say four, maybe even five. I'm not really sure, but it's really tall. Anyways, yeah, so I pulled that up earlier and uh, me and Jake rolled it up and moved it over here just so the do dogs don't run into it. Here is our mystery apple tree that we're not really sure what it is. Um, I think it's going to be okay. I'm going to have to uh, tie the branches down. I'm not sure how to, I guess on this guy we'll have to do it with stakes or something. Um, let's go, well, let's look at the, the strawberries first. Most of them look like they've made it through, unless this is just the green that they had from last year and they're just going to keep that for a while. We'll see. I don't, I'm not sure on that. Um, there are definitely some pests like moles in here but eventually I'm hoping this whole area from here to there will be filled with strawberries. This is where we're gonna have a little raised bed um, probably for you know potatoes and and carrots and things like that. Um, so I just got brought some of the boards out here so I can just kind of have an idea of how to position it and probably center it more on the back of this garage. This was our pathetic compost bin for the start of it. <laughs> it just didn't it just didn't do what I what I wanted it to. We piled it up high so maybe the stuff under there is good now. I mean we piled it up a couple times but I don't have a pitchfork to turn it all the time so I got a shovel and the shovel just wasn't quite doing it. Um, when we first started it, it really heated up well. I had these things to hold a, a cover on it and then stuff just, whatever critters just kept getting in there, burrowing in, taking out all the vegetable scraps and uh, tearing up the cover. So now it just sits here with eggshells on top, which is really, really neat. And here's our little honey crisp apple. Hopefully it's doing all right this year. Definitely gotta dig all of this grass out from around it. 
because uh, in doing my research, it turns out that's really, really bad for apples, for apple trees. They, the grass and the weeds and stuff just kill all the nutrients. So it can't be just that little circle that I had weeded out and put wood chips in. Um, and this is the Mutsu. Um, I forget, it's got another name too. Uh, it doesn't say, it just says Mutsu, but I forget what it's, what else it's called, but unfortunately, since I didn't know anything about apples and, and thought I had researched enough to know that I need different breeds to pollinate each other and stuff like that, um, and I should have looked at is, as to why this size tree was the same price as that smaller tree. Turns out, because this guy is infertile, like, it's not a pollinator, so he can be pollinated by the honeycrisp over there, but he will not pollinate anything. So, it's, he's basically just a, a look pretty and, you know, honey, he'll have his own fruits, but that's it. And then we don't know what the mystery apple is, so... I mean, if it's another honey crisp, then I guess that'd be sort of ideal. Uh, because the other tree that it could be is a Macintosh. And Macintosh uh, will not pollinate either one of these guys. So, it's if it is a Macintosh, that means not, then I'll have to get another pollinator for this little guy. And get this guy his own pollinator. But I think I can do that with a Fuji. Because a Fuji, I think, is... Seems to be flowering at the right time to be in between both of these guys, so we'll see. But that's that's where we are for right now. Okay, let's look at the plants. Um, they all look funny because they've had a couple days where it was warm enough to put them outside, um, and so now they're they're turned the opposite way since they're all leaning really heavily toward. The window so now they're kind of turned the opposite way um, here's everything growing up here uh, of course the lavender is doing really well these guys still you know nothing no roots no nothing but they're surviving somehow it's really weird I I guess they're just getting enough water they're putting on new growth as if as if they're gonna stay in there and well, there's that dill seed head that I just cut off this dill guy, which I'm going to have to trim him back again, too. Trim back the onions again. Celery's just pretty much doing the same. Like I said, that was mostly an experiment. Um, parsley, meh, same. Okay, now here is everything. Today is April 14th, so everything's been in here for... Well, at least the peppers and stuff have been in here for about a month. Um, they're doing really well. Uh, same thing with the kale and broccoli and onions and the very slow growing uh, celery. But I think it's doing okay. Um, we did, of course, lose some plants, some one of these cells didn't germinate, another one uh, germinated one, but the, the plant ended up dying for some reason. And we had um, another loss or two of the babies. They didn't seem to damp off, and I've got cocoa core in here, and you can see it's not super, super moist or anything. Um, they probably actually need a little water. Uh, Pepper plants are doing really well. This is like, I think, week three for them. I'll have to go back and uh, look at my dates. And of course, I had to replant all the cherry tomatoes because I think I let my seeds um, sit too long and ferment. I was doing some research and figured that out. Now, these guys don't look like they're doing anything. But I did lift this guy. I just, I had to know. And he did have little tiny roots, little white roots coming out. So I was afraid that they were rotting. 
they're not. They're doing good. I don't think this um, extra rosemary um, is going to germinate. It's been stratified and all that stuff, and it's been sitting in this baggie for a while. Um, nothing has really happened. That's one where I kind of smushed it just to see if something would come out of it. But, um, but that's the little <laughs> baby rosemary. So we'll at least get one out of it, which I guess is all you really need in the end. But yeah, so everything's doing really good. It's not really supposed to be warm enough today. It's going to be in like the, I think it might hit 40 tops. So it's not warm enough to really put them out. So just let a little sunshine in, morning sun sunshine. And uh, yeah, we'll see you. See you later.